we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We thank you. We bless your name. Just thank him. Say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to come and just fellowship together and learn the ways of drama ministry. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you thanks. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. All the glory belongs to you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We know that, Lord, Lord everything that you're doing, all the glory belongs to you. Everything that is happening in our lives, it is all you. And we give all the glory. We return all the glory back to you. It is not about us. It is about you. And we say, Lord, we decrease so that you can increase in us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, breathe on your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we please put our hands together for Jesus? And can we celebrate our minister, Omenka Unwachuku? Thank you so much for putting something like this together. I believe that this, uh, this ministry is going, to, is, going, man, is going places. And you know, let me tell you something very quickly. There is something that God is doing in Georgia. And God is raising amazing people, people that will carry the message of our Lord Jesus Christ, even to the ends of the earth, in the area of entertainment, media, and, you know, basically in, in, in uh, uh, the area of media and entertainment. And um, I thank God that every one of us here, we are part of that move of God in these times and this season. And I pray in the name of Jesus that none of us will, uh, will lose our place in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, that prayer that I just prayed is a very powerful prayer. I will not lose my place in Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, so this morning, by the grace of God, um, the topic that I was given to talk about is uh, prophetic acting. Prophetic acting. So, and uh, the message is divided into about four different sections, all right? And um, so I want us to open our Bibles, if you have your Bible, to Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. We're going to read a few scriptures. Because all these scriptures that we're reading will uh, eventually form all the things that um, I'm going to be sharing with us. Are we there? All right. Say, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Said God has created all things. They were and what they were created for his pleasure. Now, when you talk about pleasure, I tell people that how many of you know that God himself, he loves entertainment? How many of you know? God loves entertainment. Yes, because when you talk about pleasure, that's simply entertainment. So the reason why God created every one of us here is so that we can give him pleasure. And that's what the 24 elders just prophesied in. That word is actually a prophetic word. That God created all things and they were created for his pleasure. There is a purpose why we were created and that is what? To entertain God. All right? With everything that we're doing. So the next Bible verse that I'm going to read is Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11. And I'm going to, I might move a little quick. So... Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of him, of me, to do thy will, O God. I said, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Now, that place is talking about a script. All right? God wrote a script, and every one of us here are supposed to act that script out. Are you following? So we are building something here. It said it is written in the volume of book to do your will, O oh God. So the script that God wrote for every one of us here is to what? To do his will. And it just so happened that his will is to what? To entertain God. 
Are we following? Anybody following? It's like I'm losing some of you here. Don't worry, we're, 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 we're getting there. All right. I'm, we're going to read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess. All right. So, let's talk about prophetic acting. What is prophetic acting? Now, you can't just talk about prophetic acting without talking about the calling itself. Somebody say amen. So, it is very important that before you talk about drama, there is a need for you to have an understanding that you must be called into this ministry. All right? Sometimes when we talk about calling, a lot of you are looking for uh, some... Uh, as they always portray it in movies, this echo voice with deep bass. My son, my daughter, I am calling you now to drama ministry. No, that's not how it works. There, every man that is in this world has a channel that the Lord speaks to them. A lot of you, the reason why you are not hearing the voice of God is because you have conditioned yourself to a particular channel and you some of you want to hear the audible voice of God meanwhile your dreams your imaginations these are channels that God uses these are channels that God himself uses to speak to you so you don't necessarily need an audible voice of God the voice of God is not always audio sometime it is visual anybody listening to me so this is how you can receive the, there are some of you, sometimes you're like, I feel like that is one of the ways that God speaks to you. Because one of the easiest or the fastest or the quickest channels that spirits can communicate their will to you is through your feelings, through your conscience. All right? So when you talk about the calling of God, sometimes you're somewhere and you just have this feeling like, I feel like I can do what these people are doing. And then when you pray, you find out that the more you continue to pray, if you're consistent in the place of prayer, you find out that that feeling that you say you have become even stronger. The more you continue to pray. Now, if that feeling fades away, it's a sign that that is not what God is calling you to do. So we must establish this fact that in order for you to talk about being in the drama ministry, you must be called. Look at the person sitting next to you. Say, neighbor, before you get into drama ministry... You must be called. All right, because the truth is, passion is not enough to do ministry. You know, a lot of people have passion to do something, but then if you're not called to do it, I'm telling you, you are not, in the, you're not fulfilling the script that was written about you. So it is very important that what you align yourself with the will of God. Remember that Hebrews chapter 7 verse 10, as Jesus was saying that in the volume of the book, he was written about me to do thy will, O God. And what is prophetic acting? Now, when we talk about the prophetic, um, you know, people always think about this um, deep stuff. You know, you know, I can come here now and just begin to talk some things and people say, ah, what that guy is saying is prophetic. What that guy is saying is prophetic. But what is really, when we talk about the prophetic, what does it really mean? What is the word prophetic? What does that mean? Now, when you talk about the prophetic, there is no prophetic without the word of God. Because it is the word of God that carries prophecies. Now, and I'm going to divide this into three dimensions uh, of the word of God. We have what we call, call the graphe. Somebody say the graphe. Now, the graphe is simply a Greek word that means the holy scriptures. And the holy scriptures mean, meaning that what God spoke that were written. Are you listening to me? And if you open your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says that all scriptures were given by the inspiration of God, which means that all the holy writings, they were given by what? By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So the word of God, which is the written word, which we call the Holy Bible, that is one dimension of what? The word of God. That is the first dimension of the prophetic. Are you listening, everyone? All right. The next one is Logos. And Logos is actually... Necessary is not something, it's actually somebody, it's a person. Logos is actually Jesus Christ. That is the word of God. 
So when you open your Bible to John chapter 1, the Bible says that in the beginning was Logos. Now, those of you who study in school, you know that we have what we call uh, biology. We have, uh, what's the other one? Physiology, soteriology, sociology. Now, Logos simply means the nature of something or the reason why something is. So when you talk about biology, you're talking about the, the reason why life exists, the study of life. So now the Bible is saying in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was Logos, the reason why everything exists. You understand? In the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus, and the Word was with God. So the reason why everything here exists was with God. So yesterday while I was teaching you, uh, uh, teaching, I made mention of the fact that everything that you can see in the physical was once in the womb of the supernatural, was once in the spirit. And you know when we talk about the spiritual realm, we talk about imaginations. Imagination, can you see your imaginations? Can you touch your imagination necessarily? No, it's not necessarily tangible. Do you understand? Now, the chair that you're sitting on right now was once an imagination in the mind of some people. And it just so happened that our Lord Jesus Christ was a carpenter while he was here. So, so the le next level of the word is what? Logos. The reason why something exists. That's the, that is another dimension of the prophetic. And you know that Jesus Christ was not only the son of God while he was here. He was also what? A prophet. All right. And the next level of um, Logos is Rema, which is actually the... the the deepest dimension of the word of God. Because Rema is simply the spoken word of God. That is the one that carries the life. The, the, the spirit life giving word. The spoken word of God. You know a lot of people have died. In the body of Christ a lot of people have died for no reason. In fact and the way they died was not the way they were supposed to die. Do you know why? Because many people died because we keep quoting scriptures over them that did not carry the life of God. The Bible says in Romans that faith comes by hearing and by the hearing of the word of God, which means that if you're going to quote the scriptures, the Lord himself must be the one to give you that scriptures. Are you listening? Now, I'm, I'm teaching you about the, the realm of the prophetic now. Say, for example, you see um, a car somewhere and you need a car, Right? And then you go to the dealership and you see that car. Say, and then you lay your hands on that car and say, in the name of Jesus, I claim this car. Because the Lord said, wherever the sole of my feet shall tread, shall be mine. Guess what? You may not get that car. In fact, they may, they may even send you out or, or get you arrested. What am I saying here is that if you did not hear the word, you cannot proclaim the word. In order for you to, hear, to, to proclaim the word, to decree the word, and in order for that word to come to pass over your life, it must be heard. God himself must open his mouth and speak those words to you. That's how the word that you skip, you, you're, you're quoting the scripture can carry the life of God because it was spoken to you to quote. So it's not just about you quoting the scriptures. You understand what I'm saying now? The scriptures, the graphe, is powerful, but at the same time, if it is not occasioned by God himself, it is not, if it is not authored by God, if it was not spoken to you by God, it will not carry the life of God. All right? So, I hope, you all, I hope you are all following now. Now, the prophetic is rooted in the word, like I said, and prophetic acting is actually the accurate fulfillment of God's instruction. The accurate fulfillment of God's instructions. And there are two ways that you can fulfill God's instruction, either by revelation or by inspiration. And the difference between revelation is something that is revealed. Now, revelation, when we talk about revelation, you know, you have many people that they're teaching the word of God, they're preaching the word of God, and they make, make it seem like it's a new revelation. When we talk about revelation, revelation simply means something that has always been there. It's just that you can't see it. There is a veil on it. Revelation simply means apocalypse, which means unveiling something. It has always been there. How many of you have been in the situation whereby there is a particular scripture? You've been reading it for many years. Many years. And one day you just read that same scripture. And you're like, what? I've never seen it this way. It's because the Lord just opened the veil for you. There was a man who was in the hospital one time. He was dying. And he opened the Bible. He was reading, uh, I think it's Second Peter that talks about, he said he took our infirmity. So he read it the first and the second day. You know, it, nothing. 
And then this particular time, he opened the scripture again and he read that Bible verse. And then something just popped open in the spirit for him. And he said, what? So Jesus took my infirmity. Oh, so if he took, that means I don't have it anymore. That was what brought the healing for him. So the scripture was, must be open to you. So that's how you can follow the instruction of God. And then it comes by inspiration as well, which means that, you know, the Holy Spirit inspire you. It, it brings us an inspiration to you. And of course, it, it comes with precision by the Spirit of God. Prophetic acting also can also be an act of bringing into manifestation divine movements and being a mouthpiece for those movements of the Lord. Now, in context, prophetic acting is a precise interpretation of scripts given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and acting it with precision. Because precision, accuracy is actually the pivot of the prophetic, is a pivot of uh, um, uh, uh, you know, prophetic acting. Now, I'll share an example with you. What, what, what am I saying when I talk about precision? Say, for example, you were given a script, right, to act out. And in that script, your line says, my father, my mother, my children, and my cousin were here last night. That's all you were given to say. That is your line. So if you now go around saying, my family was here yesterday. You are wrong. Yes, we know that they were your family. But the script says, my father, my mother, my children, and my cousin were here. So now you replace those noun with a collective noun. You are wrong. Was your sister mentioned there? Hello? Was your sister in the script? Was your brother in the script? No. But then you had, you had replaced those names with the with a collective noun. So you are wrong. You are out of the line. So whatever is in the script, you must act it out with accuracy. Do you all understand what I'm saying now? And let me tell you something. I know we sometimes we face the, we face the challenge of forgetting our script. I remember one time uh, I was acting a drama. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't go through my script enough. Because I didn't have the chance. So I acted the role of a pastor. And the, pa the, the church member... Uh, he, was, uh, he was rebellious. So he had another pastor that he, he submitted under. So, and the, I, I believe, the, I think the, 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 the title of that um, uh, uh, drama was Two Masters. You know where the Bible says you cannot serve two masters? Jesus said you cannot serve. So, and I was the pastor, right? And I didn't finish to read, I didn't finish reading my script. And because, of course, at that time, I didn't have much understanding about drama ministry then. I was still very, very young then. So, I now said, when the guy now said, the storyline was that, the, because the guy was with another pastor, even though he was supposed to be my member, but then he didn't pray. So he kept, you know, shuffling between the two churches, serving between the two churches. So, and then for some reason, he, he contracted some, some kind of, you know, disease. The pastor prayed for him. He couldn't, you know, he wasn't healed. So, and the instruction was that in that script, I was supposed to be the one to pray for him and then ask him to, to repent from, you know, being rebellious. So, guess what I... All right, praise the Lord. So, guess what I did when the guy came, when he came to me? Now, in the script, it says that once he comes, the pastor should start crying as well, you know, to bring him just like a, the prodigal son, right? And give him a hug. So, when he come, when he was, as he was coming, I said, Hey, you... You. Why, 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 why are you coming here? He was like, Pastor, please. He was crying. Now, the guy that we were acting this role together, he was giving me a sign that he was, you know, he was winking at me like, no, stand up and hug me. He was, he was whispering. I was like, my friend, will you keep quiet? Your life has been destroyed and so shall it be. Get out, you know. So when I got inside the, the versary, inside the, the, you know, the green room, the, 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 uh, the writer of the script, our leader, she was standing like this. She said, David. I said, yes, ma'am. What was that? I said, wow. I said, it was powerful, right? She said, she said if, if I slap you. He said, you didn't, you look at the script. You didn't act the script now. I said, ah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. 
So what am I saying here is that when you act out of the line, you are, you are wrong. Because in the prophetic, eh, precision is very, very important. Accuracy is very, very important. Because in the realm of the spirit, if you study the scriptures, everything is accurate. That's why when God commanded Moses, he said there's a pattern that Moses had to build the temple. And there is a reason why. Because if he had built the uh, tabernacle, maybe just one inch shorter or one inch bigger, the glory will not fill it. Because there is a dimension of the glory of God that's supposed to fill the temple. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that, this is why it is very important that we are accurate as we are acting these roles out. All right? Now, the prophetic is a mystery to men. It's mystery. You know, this is why many people misunderstand the prophetic. People think that prophetic, being prophetic means that you're rude or you're proud or you're just screaming at people every, anyhow. You know, you know when prophets come on the pulpit, you know, say, you, come here, stand up. My friend. You know, no, 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 no. In fact, a prophet is supposed to be meek. The Bible says that Moses was the meekest during his time. A prophet must be filled with the love of God. Because if one of the ways you meet, oh, wait, wait a minute, why am I? But anyway, let me go, let me dive, let me dive right a little. You know, because if you're prophesying over people, somebody, maybe somebody offends you, and the Lord gives you a word for that person. There's a very high tendency that even if the Lord gives you a good word for that person, the way you will deliver the message will reflect that offense that you have in, against that person. Or if you are the type that you have not, you are not deep, uh, uh, the fruit you are, because the, the mark of a true prophet is the fruit of the spirit. And if you don't have the fruit of the spirit, I'm telling you, if the Lord says to you, maybe God gives you a word of knowledge that, ah, that brother that's there, there's $2,000 in his pocket. Now, but if you don't have the fruit of the spirit, you will go there and say, um, the Lord said you have $2,000 in your account. Now, and then the guy will now say, yes, sir, yes, sir. Meanwhile, God did not give you another instruction apart from that word of knowledge. You now say, my brother, transfer that $2,000 now into my bank account. You see, you have, you have just gone out of the line. All right? You know, you know these are some of the things that we teach at the, the, the company of prophets. Amen. Now, in the prophetic, there is no coincidence because everything has been planned, has been preplanned by the Lord. All right? You know, when we say that the prophetic is not, a, is not necessarily a mystery to God, it's a mystery to us, right? Because we are acting out what God has already said. God has already, it's, it's almost like a replay. Everything that you're seeing here now is almost like a replay. It's almost like a replay to him, you know? One time, I was watching a movie and, uh, with my mom. You know African mothers, you know, when you watch movie with them, it's, they, they can't keep quiet. So I was watching a movie with, uh, with my mom one time and... In that movie, it was a couple. So the wife poisoned the husband. So you know the Nigerian movies, you know, there's a way they, 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 they always shoot in their, their movies for anyway. So they showed the legs of that, that guy coming upstairs. And my mom was sitting there. Say, ah, is, I think that's the husband. I said, yes. Meanwhile, I had already watched the movie. Okay, before my mom, as he was going, he went to the living room. My mom was like, please, go to your bedroom. Go and sleep, go and sleep. I said, ah. Mommy, relax, relax. Ah, don't go to the kitchen. That's where the food is. Oh, that's where the food is. So the guy opened the door. Say, ah, in Jesus' name, you will not eat the poison. I said, Mom, the movie has already been acted. Why are you? <laughs> it's been acted. But you know, because she was surprised and she was just anxious to see what was going to happen because she didn't know. So it is very important that you receive revelation and inspiration from the Lord before you act your your, your movies out, your your, your script out. Whether you know it or not, every one of us here, you are fulfilling a prophecy. Do you know? You are fulfilling a what? A prophecy. Something that has been spoken before. I'm talking about acting now, prophetic acting. You are fulfilling a prophecy whether you know it or not. There is something that God has said about you. There is something the devil also has said about you. So, and the, the opposite of the pro, you know, prophecy is sooth saying. The devil has a plan. Just like God has a plan for you, the devil also has one for you. So which one are you acting out? So when you align yourself with the Lord, uh, you will be acting out the scripts that God has written concerning you. But when you are out of the line, then you'll be acting out the script that the devil has, you know. Because, you know, the, the, the goal of the devil is that he said in Isaiah chapter uh, 14, he said that he's going to be like the most high God. 
And that's why you find out that everything that God is doing, the devil also wants to have a replacement for it. A relative. That's why you have for the prophetic, you have soothsaying. That's why for the truth, you have error. That's why for the prophets, you have the false prophets or diviners. So, ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whose scripts are you going to act out? Now, the next session of this teaching is the purpose, importance, and the blessing of prophetic acting. In prophetic acting, so I'm going to stick scripted for now. In prophetic acting, the actor rightly communicates the mind of God for the drama. Now, I'm speaking now not just to actors now. I'm also speaking even to the script writers, the producers, the directors, the photographers, or the DOPs, uh, the screenwriters, whatever you, you may call them. Now, it is very important that when you talk about the prophetic acting, that you, you must receive inspiration from the Lord. Because drama is not Hollywood. Now, Hollywood, you find out that, you know, they, they have the talent, they have the gifts, but they don't carry the life of God. So that is the difference between those who are acting, you know, who are in the ministry, the movie ministry or drama ministry. All right? From your entrance to the stage, to the exit, you are expressing and articulating God's mind for the drama or the movie. You see, there's no need for us to be fighting for relevance or visibility. No need. You know, I found out that, you know, Mount Zion movies in Nigeria, which uh, Pastor Ayo uh, Makaju was talking about, do you know that growing up there, is a, there was a series of movies that they, had, they, they acted one time, long time ago. It's called The Ultimate Power. How many of you here are familiar with that? The Ultimate Power is called in Yoruba, it's Akbar Anla. Do you know that that soap opera, a lot of Muslims actually watched those they watched it. In fact, recently I was watching one of their movies and a lady who is a Muslim, she actually made a comment. She said, I, I love all Mount Zion's movies. They give me life. So you don't know whose lives you're changing. There's no need for you to try to be relevant to the, you know, sometimes we want to be relevant to the culture. Sometimes we want to have something that, you know, people can, so that it's appealing to the, to the world. No, we don't need all that. You just do whatever God asks you to do. It may not look beautiful. It may not look glamorous to people out there. I'm not saying that we should not, uh, you know, we should not uh, put excellence to what we are doing. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that we should not fight for relevance in the world, in the secular world. It's whatever the Lord gives to you that you what you write. It's whatever gives to you that you act. And when you're giving your scripts, eh, don't try to add. Understand the emotions that, are, that is in that, that, that your role. Understand your character. Have a deep understanding of your character. They ask you to act the role of a, or maybe of a, maybe a, a, a gangster. You're not up there doing extra. Whatever is in your role is what you should act. Because the moment you miss your line, you're out of the line. That means you're not, you're not, you're outside the will of God for that drama. By the grace of God, I've, I've, uh, in the prophetic that, you know, as I've flown in the prophetic by his grace, there are so many things that, you know, I will give a word of knowledge to somebody and I will use the wrong language. And the Holy Spirit will tell me, say, David, you are wrong. You have just used the, the wrong language for the person. Don't try to use synonyms. Whatever word they put in that script, say it. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit, eh? How many of you remember Jesus said, he said that the Holy Spirit, he will send somebody like himself that will remind you of all that he has taught you. So the Holy Spirit has the ability to remind you. It is very important that you study your scripts very well. He will remind you. Don't say, well, oh, these are too many words. How am I going to cram this? How am I going to, 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 to memorize? No, no, don't worry about that. Prayerfully study your script so that you're not acting out of the, out of the line. All right. The purpose of prophetic acting is to accurately fulfill God's desire. It may not be tasteful for you. You know, there are some people, they choose their own role. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to act Satan. I remember one time, they, I, when I was growing up, because I was, you know, very short, they used to make me the devil in every movie. I kid you not. I, I was always the devil. There was one year, they wanted to make me the devil. I said, no, to this year, eh, I'm acting angel. This year, I'm going to be an angel of God. <laughs> you know, but we should, you know, it's in the world that people do that. 
in the body of Christ, God knows your makeup. Even though as, a, as an actor, you're supposed to be dynamic, right? It's okay. But however, if the Holy Spirit has laid it on the, the people that wrote the script, that you should be the one to act the devil. Please, please act it. Act it very well. Act it very well. All right? You're not supposed to be creative uh, with your acting, with your writing, with your production. Because it could be a slight or huge departure from the will of God. Do you know what I mean by being creative? All right, I'll show you. God told, tells you, said, I want you to paint this wall white. You paint it half white, and then you now add the cross white. You are wrong. You have just disobeyed. The Lord told uh, uh, Saul, do you know that, that was the beginning of his, of his destruction? God told Saul, he said, go to and kill all the Amalekites and everything. The guy now brought goats sheep and all these things to sacrifice unto the Lord. No, he's wrong. He's already walking narrow. So, accuracy is very important. See, God is going to test your work. You may think that, ah, I just acted the role of... Sometimes, your role may be to just come to the stage and leave. Don't say, ah, just so that people can see you. Don't make any sound. If they did not write in the script, you should make any sound. Don't make any sound. Just go to the stage and leave. That could be your and what you just did is, a, is sending a message. It's a powerful message that you've just acted out. Because everything must be accurate, must be precise. Because you have only one goal, and that goal is to please God, who gave the idea. There is no need, I already said that, um, Exodus chapter 25, verse 40, for every divine instruction that we obey, there's a reward. Remember Isaiah 19 said that if you're, if you're willing... And you, you know, you obey that you eat the good fruit of the land. For every role you act, there's a reward from God. Yes, you may receive applause from men, but God also has a reward for you for acting that role the way you're supposed to act it out. I told you already that the, the you know that the prophetic is not necessarily a surprise to God. All right. Um, let me move on. I already told you in the beginning that um, do you know that everyone here, every one of you here. How many of you know that you're prophetic? If you don't know, you are. Okay, how many of you, since the day you were born, you have never had one dream? You are prophetic. You're prophetic. Because dream is prophetic. Because dream is a voice of the spirit. Dream is a what? A voice of the spirit. The devil can bring nightmare to you, and God can also bring his own visions to you. Do you understand? So, you are what? You are prophetic. I'm going to move on to the next section. What are the elements of prophetic acting? If you're writing down, this is why I'm reading it out. The elements of prophetic acting, number one is humility. Somebody say humility. You know, it, 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 someone who is prophetic should not be proud. You know, the scripture says that, you know, pride goes before a fall. What's going to happen is that you may be so gifted. In fact, you may be the most gifted among all the actors. But the moment you allow pride, what happens is that your gift begins to diminish. You I mean, begin to diminish in, in quality. Because there's a quality and there's a life that comes with your gift. And the moment you allow pride, what's going to happen is that it begins to deplete. It begins to reduce in quality. And then before God, whatever it is that you do, it, it, it stinks. It's like just a, a, a crashing symbol. The next element of the prophetic is inspiration and revelation. You see, your reliance is controlled by the source of an inspiration or revelation. All right? Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. When we talk about revelation and inspiration, I already told you that many ways that God speaks, you know, and the book of Revelation, how many of you know that the book of Revelation, the whole book of Revelation from chapter 1 to 22, it was actually, it actually started with a signal. That was all. It was when the angel, Jesus sent an angel and he signaled to John the Apostle. That was the beginning of, of the, the whole book of Revelation. And because of his obedience to that signal, 
he, the, the, the vision began to flow. The vision began to flow. So you have to understand that there's a need for you to what? To submit to inspiration and revelation of the Holy Spirit. The next, uh, the next um, element of prophetic acting is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And you know that knowledge, of course, is informative. Knowledge is informative, and wisdom brings direction. You know, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says that uh, the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And in order for you to bring solution to a problem. Now, for example, let me Google give you an example. Uh, maybe you're a script writer or let just say, you know, in your movie or drama production, you discover that there is a problem in the body of Christ or even in your church. And you want to address it. Because what, the prophet do, what a prophet does is that he pulls up, he uproots, he plants, and he corrects, and he admonishes, and he exhorts. That is the ministry of a prophet. And in prophetic acting, what you're doing is that you're bringing correction. Because you're bringing alignment. And also, anywhere the line of, uh, you know, the truth and error has been blurred, you draw the line again. That's the purpose of the prophetic. And in the prophetic acting, say for example, there's an issue in the church and you want to address it in your movie production. Right? It's very, very important that you know how to... Now, being aware of that problem is, is, is knowledge because it gives you information, right? Now, in order for you to address this issue, you need wisdom. It is wisdom that will bring that... Um, that direction. The more about the Bible says that wisdom, wisdom is profitable to direct. So knowledge is what informative, and wisdom is directive. And then understanding what understanding does is that it brings alignment, it brings agreement, because it is the uh, the result of knowledge and wisdom put together. The next element of prophetic acting is utterance. Now, what is utterance? Utterance is not necessarily you just speaking or just, just talking. It's a, it's a spirit energized communication. Spirit energized communication. You know, it's not about uh, speaking heavy grammar. You know, as I'm talking to you now, I may be speaking um, all the vocabulary in the world and, you know, phonetics and, you know, grammar and using big words. If it does not carry the life of God, it's, it's, it's in vain. So it is when the Holy Spirit energizes what I'm saying that, that it can bring transformation to you. So your acting eh, must, be, must be filled with what? With the Spirit of God. And how can your acting be filled with the Spirit of God? It means that you must have labor in the place of prayer and fasting. Just for one row. I'm telling you, it, it, you're not doing too much. If you fast for three days, just so that you can act your role well. There's nothing wrong in that. Because you want to be in alignment with the Lord. And then the next one is accuracy, which I've already mentioned. The next element is discernment. You know, because the pivot of, you know, of the prophetic is discernment. It lets you know whether you are in error or acting by the truth or by carnal nature. And discernment also is a sign of maturity. You know, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 said that the food of the mature man is, uh, is strong meat. Those who have exercised their senses, you know, through discernment. If you're a script writer or you're the one casting people, you will know the right actor to cast for each role because you have prayed, you have sought the face of God. The last one is timing, all right? In, the pro in prophetic acting, you are not, you, in, the, in the prophetic, you, you, you are not talking just because you have something to say. There is a time to talk. Like uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 says, a time to talk and a time to keep silence. When you are acting your role, there is an emotion that God wants you to display. Alright? For each role. Now, um, I'm, the, I'm going to stop here because I wanted to talk about the prophetic characters. Alright? From the scriptures. Um, but we won't be able to go into that. Um, but I will just go quickly and I'll read to you. Um, but let me say finally, know that in the scheme of things, your, your sphere of influence is the stage that God has purposely brought you to act the script. Please don't spoil it. 
Don't spoil it. And please don't allow mediocrity. Whatever you want to do for the Lord, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says that whatever your hands find to do, do it with what? Anybody? Whatever your hands finds to do, do it with what? All your might. All right? And David also said that I will not give to the Lord something that will not cost me anything. So it must be worth something. You must make sacrifice. And uh, I'm going to read this uh, prophetic word that the Lord just gave to me for the, this ministry. And I call it, you know, prophetic edification and numa moment. This ministry will only last as long as it draws inspiration and revelation from the Holy Spirit. Please don't try to create Hollywood and now, and now sprinkle Jesus on it. Because that is what is very common nowadays. If you take the music in the uh, ministry now, oh my goodness, it's so polluted. You know, they just come with worldly ideas. They will now put Jesus and maybe quote a little scriptures here and there. No, no, that's not right. Make yourself a clean vessel as whatever you act may negatively impact you. Whatever you act will what impact you. Make sure that you're a clean vessel before the Lord as you're coming. FPC drama ministry, even though God is raising you for a global impact, continue to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If he called you, you should only follow his instructions. Do you know that if Abraham, you know, he was in the wilderness when God sent him out of his household. He was in the wilderness. If Abraham disobeyed God one time, just for a moment, do you know that God will leave him in the wilderness? Oh? God will leave him there. So, please, if he has called you, make sure you listen to him. You may lose relevance in this culture, but please, never lose the voice of God. If there's anything you should treasure, it's the voice of God. The voice of God. You may lose anything. Ah, my goodness. If there's anything you should labor on. Eh? You know, we were talking about if I perish, I perish. If there's anything you say, if I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. Is you finding the voice of God. Make every effort to make sure that you do not lose the voice of God. Then make prayer and fasting your culture. Some people, when we, they come for rehearsal, I remember growing up, when we were acting, sometimes our rehearsal lasts for five hours. And we will pray for about two hours. Don't say, ah, guys, hurry up, come on, let's, let's act, let's act. Mm -mm, no. Because that is not in, in, in drama. Acting is not the first thing. It's not the first thing. You must, you must, your, because your vessel must, no, must be open to receive from the Lord and to do what he wants you to do. Then make, uh, I already said, that make prayer, fasting, uh, and fasting a tradition and a culture of this ministry. This is not a plas platform for superstars or celebrities because we are all servant leaders, all right? We are all servants. We are all serving God. But it is a breaking ground for service to raise servant leaders who will take the word by the storm for Jesus. You know, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, that whatever you do, you should do unto the glory of God. And lastly, the end of the Lord is upon this ministry to break the bonds of cartels in media ministry and even more in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your word. Help us, O God, to align ourselves to your will. We give you glory. Lord, every necessary sacrifice that we need to make to make your will known to men. Lord, help us. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ma. I appreciate you. Thank you.